Hi, in this quick video, I want to show you how does the GitLab Kubernetes agent work with a repository on GitLab.com. We have our amazing documentation under the usual docs.gitlab.com page, and I've already made the initial setup of this agent. The GitLab side component is managed by the GitLab SRE, so we don't have to deal with that. What I did is I created a configuration repository. You can see it here. I will speak about this in a moment. And I created the agent record using uh, GitLab's GraphQL editor and retrieved the token. I did not install the agent to the cluster yet, so this is what I'm going to do first. Uh, yeah, let's, let's start with that. I have a KNNS. Actually, what, what we are going to use is a local Kubernetes cluster. It's a K3S cluster running in multipass, so it's totally local to my computer. And we will synchronize it with pool-based deployment from GitLab.com. Um, okay, let's see, create the namespace. As it was added in the documentation, now we can see that we have the namespace created. And the next command would be to install the cluster set component, but as I already have everything set up, it will immediately grab this configuration, so I will speak a bit about this. So when I set up this project, I did a few things. First, I added the pod info um, manifest to this repository. It comes from the official uh, GitHub repository for pod info, actually. And as you can see here, it has to be installed in three steps if you use pure Kubernetes manifest. First, the common files, then the backend, then the frontend. For this reason, I only have the common files uncommented, the others are still commented. How does this file look like? You can see that uh, this is the GitOps section with manifest project. The ID reflect is the same project where these files are available. I can specify a default namespace or not. In this case, actually, the YAML files contain the namespace, but it will create the web app namespace itself as well. So that's why actually we have a few later steps. Okay, let's get started. So um, here we go. And I'm going to install the agent. And we'll see as it starts. And once it's available here, I will jump into the logs. Of course, it takes some time to start up. So let's wait for that. Granted, I will a few things for this recording. And here you can already see that it creates the web app namespace, creates the service account, and everything around that. So I think we are good to go, but let's have a look at the namespaces. Yes, the web app namespace is available here. Perfect. So the next step is to go back to GitLab and uncomment this line. And let's commit it, uh, install the backend. Comment done, okay, uh, oops, I think I might be late now, but let's see if we can still catch things happening. Yep, we are just applying the resources. Everything is being applied here. So as we move to develop, the backend is already there. Perfect, now let's go to enabling the front end. Install the front end. And we'll just wait for it to show up. As we trust the agent. You might ask, how does this part work? Actually, we, the GitLab site component watches our Git repository. And when there is a new uh, version available, it pings the agent in the cluster to install the front end. Okay, uh, a quick port forward will, will help us to test if everything works well. So let's see. And yes, it does. We are served by the that specific front end pod, and we can do the pings as well, and everything is there as expected. 
So this was a very quick demo of the GitLab Kubernetes agent on gitlab.com, but actually the agent supports more features than just simple pool-based deployment. We support Kubernetes network security alert integration as well with Cilium and its Hubble relay. And we are just currently working on push-based integration as well in this secure way where you don't have to open up your cluster and you can really control the behavior of the agent much more than we had it previously.